Tonight, I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, Mikey Kurzweil for stepping in at late notice. Uh, we had one of Joe's friends get abducted by aliens and couldn't turn up. No. So Mikey's very kindly turned up at the last few minutes to come along. Thank you, Mikey. That's all right. They weren't aliens. They were my friends. So I just wanted to come and do it. Ah, that yeah. makes sense now. <laughs> um, we're down at the Sound House, um, which in some ways is not quite a spiritual home for you, but you've played here quite often, haven't you? I have, yeah. Quite a few over the years. Probably, well, from when I was about 18, a lot. A couple yep. of times a year at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to sort of start us off, can you give us a little bit of an intro as to how you got into music uh, early on? Because I first came across you in a band called Moving Mirrors. Was that your first kind of musical? Uh, no, it wasn't really. Um, I've played the piano since I was four. Yeah. Um, and when I was about 11, I think it was. I can't remember how old I was. Probably 11. Um, got into my first band with a group of old schoolmates who are now my best friends. <laughs> You know, outside of music, um, just been playing and gigging since then. Really, I got into blues first, yeah, um, which was really bad at. Um, so I've come away from that. But yeah, from about eleven, right. And having seen you in Moving Mirrors, w- was that the first sort of performing that you'd done, or had you played solo no, before that, done, or had you been in other bands? Yeah, I'd been. I'd done that band from when I was eleven. We did our first gig when we were about fifteen at the uh, Sumo on. Braunston Gate, uh, and since then, been in a couple of other bands, 60s band called the Shenanigans, um, the old Moving Mirrors, which was Rizudox, who were quite. That was the, quite, I knew oh, there yeah, was Rizudox, another name, yeah. yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah, that, that was quite a good band, that was the best band um, at the time, anyway. That yeah. was a good laugh. That's what sent me mental, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. And why, why did that one change from Rizudox into Moving Mirrors? Was uh, it the same did, people no, or we changed, changed the style? We, yeah, we changed a couple of people um, and then changed the style very slightly and tried to take it more seriously. But since then, you know, things have changed again. Yeah. Um, and what happened with Moving Mirrors? Because you seem to have quite an impetus behind that band. It seemed to be going places and then yeah, it was, all of a sudden it was, it was over. Um, it was a strange one, really. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, politics. All oh, right, okay. But yeah, it went went kind of like that. One day it was there, and one day it wasn't. Yeah, um, that's where it's gone from. From there, really. Okay. Um, so from that, was that when you moved into? Because recently, um, <clears throat> we've seen you nearly always solo, occasionally as humdrum. Yeah. Was that the point at which you decided you were going to kind of branch out on your own and? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff on my own at the minute. Um, Bob and Blaine. The drummer and bassist from Humdrum, they're busy at the minute. Blaine's going off to Australia, which, you know, devastated me, obviously, uh, just a little bit. Not a lot, because I'm not going to stop him doing what he wants. But yeah. um, Bob's doing really good stuff with his uh, food project for Leicester, Feeding the Homeless. And Blaine's going to Australia. So at the minute, I'm just going to crack on and do it on my own Yeah, for a bit, yeah. And how would you describe your music as Mikey Kerr's like solo? Uh, it's funny you should say that. I was thinking that on the way here, and you desc- <laughs> you described it perfectly the other night. Um, you said it was like folk rock. Yeah. That when you, when I read that, when you said it was folk rock, I can't really describe it as anything else because you know I love my folk music and I love my rock music, and I can't call myself alternative because I'm not cool enough. So <laughs> that was just the perfect description of it. So so it's a fusion of folk. Yeah, and rock. it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you say your influences are? Oh God. I've got loads. I've got loads and loads. I've, yeah. I've recently just, I've recently, I know it sounds strange, got into Elbow. Um, and I don't know how I've not found them before because yeah. they're fucking wicked. Um, so they're my daily listen at the minute, trying to get into that band. But Radiohead are a big influence of mine. Bob Marley, um, a lot of drum and bass, hip hop, old 90s hip hop. I'm like massively influenced by yeah. even though it doesn't come through in my music but yeah all that beat heavy stuff you know like, yeah you know like, yeah 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 but if I can make you know folk music sound a little bit like that yeah here and there that's I'm winning because although you're not going to do it tonight you do use loops and I do, yeah. effects yeah. and things yeah um, how long have you been doing that because again I having seen you quite a few times live I thought that was a new addition to your music but having seen some older YouTube videos you've yeah. actually been doing that for a while I can't remember how long ago it was when I got that loop pedal but when I got it it like revolutionized my life playing um, I don't like to do a lot without the loop pedal because I come up with songs and hear them in my head and want to put the bits down for the songs that I can hear in my head. Yeah. And without the loop pedal, I've only got one bit, 
with the loop pedal I've got the drums I can do the bass I can do all the riffs the little simple riffs I do around it and I can make the song sound more like how I hear it yeah. other than others if I, I can play anyone an acoustic song and they can go yeah it's alright acoustic song like. but if I can put the loops down and put all the beats and melodies and everything around it then I'm enjoying it and it makes it sound better to them anyway yeah. so it's a win win when did you decide Bob our uh, audio guy has asked me to ask you this question yeah. when did you decide to stop the drumming and become a proper musician <laughs> <laughs> I had no yeah. Party, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love drumming. I, I would love to get back on a kit, but yeah, you're limited. You're limited to a kit. Like I, 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 I felt, I felt limited. I used to, I used to play the kit and play like boom, boom, ka, boom, gum, 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 and and try and come up with melodies on the toms. But you just, you're so limited. Yeah. With the guitar, I will play the piano as well. You, you, you can't get that out of. You can't get it out of drums. Yeah. Um, I love the drums. I, I love them to bits. But you and can't get what I, what I get out of the guitar or piano. You can't. You just can't do it unless you've got, you know, some really posh pads or, you know. Stuff and I guess like with that. drums you're dependent on others generally as yeah, well, you aren't are. you? You are, and that's that's the enjoyment as well because yeah. you you're enjoying what other people are doing. But if you want to make melodies, you can't do it on a normal drum kit yeah. unless you've got all the samplers and everything around you. Um, what now? I, I mean, how do you see your music developing? Are you going to keep? doing Mikey Kerslake solo or is Humdrum going um, to come back? I don't know what's going to happen. I'm in limbo at the minute again. Um, I kind of like being limbo. It makes me feel a bit uneasy. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm doing. So I try and do everything. You know, you put all, everything into everything. So at the minute, I don't know. But my solo stuff, I'm, I'm definitely writing a lot more than I have done in the last two years at the minute. I was going to ask you about yeah. what volume of work you have because you still play some of those early... It looked like kitchen yeah. or spare room session videos that you have. Yeah, yeah, it's kitchen, yeah. <laughs> kitchen. It's in my mum's sure kitchen. There was a spare room right, as well. Mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, it takes me a good six months to finish a song. All oh, right. And it always has. Yeah. And because I was like trying to do the loops with it, and then I come up with something else, and I go, oh, "Fuck that!" You know, I don't want to do that bit, and I'll change it to that bit, or I'll sometimes I'll put a whole song's worth of lyrics to a piece of music yeah. and I realised it doesn't work so it would take me another three months to write the lyrics to it and I'll just swap and change it for about six months it takes me there's one of the songs I played tonight called Drop it took me six months to write because I'm constantly changing it yeah. or because I'm changing the way I play it or because I'm changing the way I feel about it or because the words are wrong in one bit I'll just that's just about it half a year one song and when you're writing songs, um, do you write them specifically for your solo singing? And do you have to adapt them then if you do them yeah. with humdrum? Yeah, or? Well, if I write a song, it's, it's for me, you know, initially, it's for me. Yeah. So for anyone to take anything from it, they, they, you know, Bob and Blaine are really good as well. And anyone who's worked, done music for me before has asked me what the song's about. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to explain if yeah. you know if I'm going. Oh, I think you're a wanker or something. To someone. It's a bit difficult because I don't want to say who oh, I think's a wanker or what I think's shit. Yeah. Because if they don't agree with it, they're not going to get anything from it. But yeah. Yeah. This, usually, I write it for myself, and people take vibes off it. They don't usually ask me many questions about it, which is good. And where do you get the inspiration for your songs? What triggers a song in you? Oh, all sorts. I get. Uh, I get annoyed with work. Or I get happy about, you know, playing gigs. Or I get happy about people. Or I get annoyed with people. It's all different aspects of, you know, normal life. I like to think of myself as writing about, really. And what sort of volume of, of songs do you have at the moment that you could? I mean, if you were to record an EP or something or an album, I'll do you probably, have what ten, twenty songs? I think I counted a couple of years ago actually when I was doing an acoustic recording down in Essex, and I had about twenty-one songs. Yeah. But it's diminished since then because I've sacked off a couple so I've probably got about 15 at the minute yeah. knocking about somewhere so you there. kind of cull them as you yeah I just with... I discard them sometimes I can come up with a song one month after six months I'll like say and I'll play it for a month and I'll say yeah it's wicked and then I'll come up with an idea for another one and then I'll just go well that's not so wicked I'll just fuck it off and completely forget about it Yeah, and I won't play it ever again so it's there somewhere but I won't play it ever again Okay. Yeah. Well, on the note of playing songs, could we uh, ask you to play the first two first tonight, please? Yeah, do you want the first two, yeah? Please, thank You're you. You're brave. You're very brave. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my uh, first song of tonight. Thanks for having me as well, guys. You've been very patient. Um, it's called Summer. Unlooped, shall I say. In the 
summer's deep heat in the back streets of soft heat and I'm no miracle worker but I do my best to make you have fun or to make you have fun Making breakfast, coffee and tea is simplicity that makes my wealthy a free, and I'm still no miracle worker, but I do my best to make you have fun. To make you have fun To make you have fun Yeah, to make you have fun The place you can escape The memories on tape The times that last an age The hate that fades too late A long way A long way Still no miracle worker, but I do my best. And I'm still no miracle worker, but I do my best to make you have fun. Yeah, to make you have fun. Thank you. Oh, you want more straight away? Oh, let me have a sip. <laughs> let me have a sip. I know, it's red stripe in the zebra can. It's called Small Town Nightlife, and it's about um, the town which I used to live in, occasionally still do live in, at my old mother's house, called Lusserworth. And uh, I walked through it one night and I thought, oh, I'll write a song about it. And that's it. <laughs> that's description half, that isn't it, eh? <laughs> Beat that description. So I tried a small town nightlife, and I'm pleasantly surprised at how quiet it is. The trouble and fighting, the fluorescent lighting is gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. And we can't provide it all for this long. So applied, a great man's white light. His light behind the bars of the Queen and the Hams The trouble and tormentor, business man's descent is gone It's all gone It's all gone It's all gone As trouble banter friends come together as one 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 And if I don't care about myself And if I don't care about my own health Yeah, yeah, yeah And if I care about banter more than wealth And if getting home to me is more than stealth Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, then you oh, can revise your persuasions to get rid of red eyes. Oh, how I tried. A small town nightlife And I'm pleasantly surprised At the welcome I found No money in the pockets, no Fireworks stuck in the ground In the ground In the ground In the ground, in the ground. Exploding in the air over the small town, town, town. Thank you. We've got loads of people in this song, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned Lotterworth. Do, do you actually live there now? No, I live in Leicester now. All right. Yeah, I live, uh, I'm not going to tell you where I live. Because then the police will know. But uh, I think the, just fan, off, the fans would be more interested. Yeah, just off Narborough Road somewhere. Oh, oh good That's area. That's a long road. It gives them a load of options, doesn't it? Indeed. Not too bad to get to your work either. No, it's lovely. Actually, I prefer the drive from Narborough Road than from Lutterer. Because I've got time to listen to music. Like I've discovered Elmo in the yeah. last couple of weeks. I've got time to listen to a good chunk of music before I get to work. And I'll just chill out. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. What do you think to the music scene in Leicester generally? You, I mean, you've been involved in it for quite a while now. How would you describe yeah. it? Um, it's brilliant. I couldn't, you can't fault it. I've been to London quite a few times over the last couple of years, and to be honest with you, unless people are really making an effort, you can't beat Leicester at the minute. What do you think's caused that? Is it because there are a lot of venues? Is it just that we have a rich vein of talent at the moment? All right, pal. <laughs> uh, Sorry, getting a bit of feedback there. Yeah, we're getting a bit of feedback there. <laughs> um, no, I think the talent in Leicester is amazing, as always. It always has been. But it took a dip a couple of years ago. Um, the venues have always been here. The yeah. venues have always been in Leicester. Um, I mean, people used to talk about the Charlotte as being almost this seminal venue. Yeah. Um, I can't say anything derogatory about the Charlotte because I love it. Yeah. And I used to love it and I still love it now, even when um, they do acoustic knots and stuff. But um, back when I was 18, 19, all the venues that are here now still are, you know, the Sandhouse was here at some point, but the Sandhouse is exemplary sound system and that. Yeah. But all, this, all the other music venues, they've always been there and they've always been just as good. Um, it's just people's intake and, and passion about live music yeah. went down a little bit. It's always been here. It's always been here. It's never been, like, the level's never gone down. Really. So do you think there's more of an appetite again now for live music? Yeah, definitely. Is, is it In almost last... with people's disposable yeah. income as we're last... supposedly getting better off? The... Well, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go that far. But, um, this is yeah, not a party political years, broadcast. People, you know, you see people like Ed Shearer and, and the acoustic artists. That's just one I picked out there. The less famous one, um, and Sam Smith and all that, all yeah. that stuff. In the fashion, the acoustic or live music scene has become, you know, sought after again. It went down the pan a little bit, you know, when we had uh, what's that one that that Chinese bloke did, old Japanese one. Oh, Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Don't knock you know, it. What I, used to, I used to, I used to turn, <laughs> I used to turn the radio on when when that came out, and I used to go, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> fucking, I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to look at. What, what do you think of this? And everyone go, yeah, we fucking love it, mate. And then all of a sudden, that's gone out the window, and all these acoustic things have come back in, yeah. and the, the passions come back into music again. So Suddenly. you think it's driven by what's going on nationally, <clears throat> the kind yeah, of music that's yeah, prevalent? Yeah. yeah. Well, if you if you go if you go and and I won't go into depth, but if you go into radio stations, national radio stations, and go, yeah, hey, we'll give you a couple of billion quid to play shit music for a year, then after a year, loads of people are going to be into shit music and they're going to be loving it. And if you go into, uh, on the same token, if you yeah. go into radio stations and go, yeah, we'll pay you a billion quid to play some proper music, no auto-tune, no nothing, just someone on the acoustic guitar or live bands around them, 
we'll pay a billion quid for it for a year, yeah. then it'll come back into fashion. And luckily, in the last year or two, that's what's happened. Luckily for people like me, or yeah. Siobhan, from the last session you did, luckily, yeah. they appreciate it again. That's interesting, because as I look at audiences, I, I do go to a few gigs, as I look at audiences, I wouldn't say there are necessarily new faces coming along. No, well, um, I mean, if you feel there are, that's great. I'd, I'd love to yeah, think I've seen loads, I've seen quite a lot of new faces at the gigs that I've done over the last six months. And uh, and it's a bit weird because some of the old faces who went to like all the other stuff yeah. have suddenly realised that there's something else going on again yeah. and they've come back. And they're like, we remember seeing you when you were, you know, yay high. 15 at the sumo or 16 at yeah. the donkey and i've gone i don't really know you and we're like no we went off and we've been doing clubbing stuff with stuff like gangnam style or stuff you know for years <laughs> yeah. but we've just suddenly seen the lights again and they've come back yeah and it's, it's brilliant oh, and you of... do see it you do because I, I watch it very carefully like with uh, movie mirrors like, yeah like you mentioned earlier we watched it like hawks for a year and it is quite funny how it kind of turns back so it's almost cyclical yeah it just turn, it turns back yeah. but we're in the right stage at the minute for making like proper musicians proper musicians again. Yeah. I think I think you and can never put a pinpoint on it but you you, you got to assume that you know what the big people are doing and where do you see yourself going with your music I mean is it a hobby is it something you'd yeah. like to turn into yeah, full it time it, it's a hobby really yeah um, do you have ambitions I mean well, obviously, I guess yeah, if you were off a big contract, contract. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do. Um, but I've got a job that I love. I've got music that I love. I've got friends that I love, and I'm quite happy at the minute. You know, if someone turned around to me and said, "Come and make loads of music for us for a year," I'd be like, "All right, then. yeah, it's all right, let's do it." But I like working, I like grafting, I like being where I am. And it's brutal. So the music but, is that sort of a thing that. Yeah, it's all half and half. Yeah. I, I, I go to work. I love going to work sometimes. Not on a Monday. <laughs> I hate going to work on Monday. Um, but I like going to work. I like making music at night time. And that's what I do. Yeah. I go to work in the day. I make music at night. So the two separate things. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I do. Talking about gigs, um, and, and having seen you at quite a few gigs, and most recently last Friday at the Donkey, you seem to have quite a loyal following. Yeah, I think I have. Like strangely, <laughs> I, was saying, I was saying earlier, I was, how much of you know, I misbehave myself at my gigs properly. I yeah. really do misbehave, so I don't know how they still come and see me. But but maybe that's part of the charm yeah. because one of the things I would say about your gigs is that you always in, get involved in a bit yeah, of banter with the crowd. I love to. I can't remember what I was saying on uh, Friday or Saturday. What not was it? Somebody apparently, oh, yeah, and I couldn't see who it was. When you asked mm. how many more songs, they shouted out none. Yeah, I mean, how rude! I couldn't see who it yeah, was. Well, obviously, say who it was. but <laughs> you were able to come. <laughs> you were able to come back very quickly on that. Yeah, I don't know why they. I don't know why they come back to be honest. Because I do generally take the Mickey. I yeah. take the piss, um, but I must enjoy it. Um, is that something you develop strange. consciously? Because it is one of the things yeah, I, I notice about some it. of the younger bands that they don't have that it's out of the comfort zone yeah. to talk to the crowd th whereas you're quite comfortable doing it as is Siobhan what it is 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 I've worked in like you know kind of like the motor industry or the truckers industry for a long time now so if someone walks in and starts giving me shit I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm, you're not a sponge there's no flies about me I don't, I don't choose or I don't decide or I don't have any qualms about giving the shit back yeah um, and I think it's the same on a stand up on stage as well if someone starts Give me grey flock like certain individual did the other night, I don't know where you are. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it doesn't remain matter. nameless. It doesn't matter and no one no one minds because if you're old enough and and you know, settled in enough, you're not gonna mind someone giving it to you back or giving yeah. it to someone. Well, in a way it's better having somebody react to you whatever yeah. way rather than just having total silence yeah. from a crowd. Well I've had quite a lot of experience with talking to brick walls uh, over the last couple of years. Um what so, crowds yeah. that just haven't reacted to your music? No, just literally brick walls, just from <laughs> being off my face. I, I can I can literally talk to a brick wall, and and the brick wall will laugh back at me as well. That's even better. So, yeah, I can just talk to anyone. We'll have to try that next time yeah. we have you on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a brick in. Um, okay, uh, we're running on time, wise. Could we ask right. you to do another couple of numbers for us, please? Yeah, what do you want? One or two? Two, please. You want two? Yeah. Oh, we're God. greedy here. Ain't told what to do. Greedy now. for good music. This is called too much out the can. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Mm. Am I behaving myself, by the way? I'm, being all, I'm behaving. No, all. we didn't want you to behave. Oh, right. Yourself. Okay. Let's call too much out the can. Quite literally, too much out of the can. Shot of the can and you're walking graffiti painting on our wall from public view and discreetly at the can of my eye see I breathe Words that instantly defeat me Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Oh. Walking graffiti Painting on a wall For public view and discreetly At the can of my I see oh, I breathe Words that instantly defeat me Place me, depreciate me, and it ends in grief. Cause the makers you meet when they stop your heartbeat. Jim, it is. So I've got to do another one straight away. <laughs> I usually uh, give people grief in the brakes. <laughs> Let me just tune my guitar. Okay. Yeah. This is my new one as well, it's called Drop. It's about dropping it all. So this is exclusive? Uh, well, no, I played it the night actually. I played it a couple of times, but I was just testing the water. Oh. But I've got it sorted now, I think. Let's see if we can get some Facebook feedback on this. Oh, God. <laughs> You'll have a couple less followers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called Drop. All the levels are right, boys. Sounds amazing. Yeah, sound. <laughs> Your silence speaks volumes Receive light and clear No need for instructions It'll all be adhered to Batten down the hatches Turn it all in Run out of persistence And stay in Whoa, whoa, no conversations on you 
whisper lessons You take the bread and wine And reap the God within Love the quietness Where you could hear a pin Love the quietness when you could hear a pin drop So just picking up on what you said there, that's a new song. Just talk us through how you came up with that song. Is it, it's oh. relatively recently written? Yeah. Um, it was like, you know when people get the ump wheel? Yeah. I'll just say people. I'm not all special. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at that. Like, I wish get, I hadn't said that thing yeah, on yeah. Friday now. <laughs> if people get the ump wheel, yeah. they'll generally, you know, give you the quiet treatment. So that's the first line. It's like silence speaks volumes, receive loud and clear. Yeah. Like if someone's ignoring me or being silent, I should be like, "All right, then. you you pissed off. I'll just fucking leave you to it." So that's pretty much the whole song. Yeah. Um, but then it like elevates into drop, drop, just drop the fucking. Don't get annoyed by it because everyone gets annoyed with everyone, don't they? Yeah. Even your closest friends, family. That's about what it is, you know. Just uh, what's the second verse? I can't remember what I wrote. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's like no conversation, news bulletins, like news bulletins that like shout about it. No conversation. Don't give it no conversation. If you want, if you want people to know why you're pissed off, just give it a news bulletin. Shout it out to people. Yeah. Because if you give it the silent treatment, they're going to know anyway. So there's no point in hiding it. No, you might as so well. Was just, I was just, that was just like a. Um, I didn't. I wanted to like portray. If you give people silent treatment, there's no point because they're going to know that you're pissed off about something. Anyway. They're going to know that they've pissed you off about something. It's just like a pointless exercise by not talking to people. And you say you kind of work and hone a song over six months. So yeah. you'd have started that song back end of last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I started that song. I could tell you exactly when I started it if you want. Because I got it. In, I put it all down in my phones. And my oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, like a little aid memoir on your yeah, phone. Yeah, no, I I put it in my phone first, and then I um, and then I write it down on paper. That's kind of. Uh, I must admit, I use my phone for that for putting notes yeah, in because so otherwise things just fly out of your head, don't they? Yeah, they do. I actually started writing that um, in what's the night? September. Yeah, September last year. Yeah. And it starts pretty so well I, then. Has been yeah. the six months, hasn't yeah. it? I wrote you... it in September and yeah. then. Didn't do the music till about December. I think I wrote the music in December. So. And how do you assess how a song's gone down when you first played it live? Do you have mates in particular that you ask? Yeah, I do. I do. It, yeah, that's a that's a good question. That is, Trev. You should <laughs> do this for a living. You should. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of mates. If I'm like, what's that new song like? I'm like, shit. I'll never play that song again. Yeah. Only to myself. Uh, if they say it's good and I work on it, but like I say at that point. That's probably six months into writing it. Yeah. And I've got some fine tuning to do. Um, and so these are mates who would be honest with you and say yeah, if they yeah. didn't I'll like never, a song never, objectively. 
you know, there's loads of people who'll just go, yeah, that's wicked, Mike, yeah, brilliant. But yeah. there's, a, there's probably three mates that I know. That you three, really trust. Three people in my life who I trust with my songs, and that's one's my mum. If she tells me it's shit, I really know it's shit. And Can I couple... jump in as Madeline one? No, she's not. Oh, she's come not on. At the minute. She's not at the minute. Can't uh, she get into sorry, it? Sorry, Mads. Yeah, she could. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I I take my um I take criticism off three people at the minute. Yeah. One's my mum and the two. I won't mention the two, but you don't want to embarrass if, them. If, no, I won't embarrass them, but I know if something's good they'll say it's good. And yeah. if it's bad it's generally bad anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So Madeline does crop up quite a bit on your posts. Yeah. Why, what have you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just oh, wondered, does she have any involvement with your music? Yeah, she, we're going to start writing again. We're going to start writing in the summer, I think. Yeah. Um, she's a wicked musician. She's better than me. Um, so, yeah. Does she play at the moment? I, I've yeah, she plays seen. piano. Um, she's really good on recorder. Yeah. Um, and she's a really good vocalist as well. So, yeah, my sister and me will be doing some duets soon. All right. And she's proper good, mate. She's proper good. Like, yeah. My vocals ain't shit on hers. She's proper good. I'll have to watch out for this. Yeah. What What have you got coming up gigs wise? Uh, I've got the tenth. What date is the tenth? Tenth of April. Yeah. Is I that think Friday? That's uh, Thursday. Is it? Thursday? Well, it could be a Friday. I've got the tenth anyway. I can't yeah. remember where it is, but it's somewhere. No, it is a Friday. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. It's the tenth in Leicester somewhere. Yeah. Um, then I've got something else as well. I'm really bad with dates. I've yeah. not got a diary, so I can't remember. But I've, I've got a couple in April. So people can follow you on Facebook and, <coughs> yeah, and you can put it on what's Facebook. Coming on. Get me on Mikey Kerr's like on Facebook. And yeah. And what pretty. about recordings? Have I don't think you've done any recordings as Mikey Kerr's like solo, have you? No, I haven't. I've I've been speaking to someone about doing it actually, someone who does the sound at the firebug. Oh yeah. Do you know him, Russ? Yeah, the Russ chap Taylor. with quite a smooth head. <laughs> Only because I've got one as well, I can yeah, well, say you, it. You've got half a smooth. That Russ has got the <laughs> nice, uh, the nice polished one. Going, one. Yeah, I've been doing. I've been having a couple of chats with Russ. So I'm yeah. going to do some recordings with Russ, um, and sort of that. But I need to get stuff out there for people because yeah. every time I do a gig like on uh, for, last Friday, they're going, "Where's your CD? Where's your... I've not got one." And if I don't finish CD with Humdrum, I've got to finish one with someone else. So, yeah, yeah. Is it, I mean, is that quite a big exercise? Would you have to spend quite a bit of time in a no, studio? Not really. No, not really. It probably, it, to be fair, it'd probably be just sat down on the sofa and we go, with my loop pedal, I'll just go, you know, get it over and done with and then do a couple of bits of fine tweak and job so you, together. you could self-record it? Or no, would, I wouldn't no? go that far. I'm not okay. that good. But uh, I know I have to do a loop pedal. I don't know yeah. how to do the levels <laughs> and stuff. But um, no, it wouldn't take long. It wouldn't take long. Yeah. Yeah. And... I mean, are you thinking of putting out an EP then? Well, yeah. I've got to do it either, either or. I'll do it. Humdrum stuff is sounding wicked at the minute, but yeah. we've just not finished it. I was saying to the boys earlier, uh, not finished the Humdrum stuff yeah. yet. And the guys aren't available either? Yeah, not the minute. No. Not the minute. But, but maybe they summertime. Are, they, they are available. This, we've got all the material there. Yeah. Um, it'd take probably, you know, a day to do. But... At the minute, we're just too busy. We all yeah. work full time. We've just got too much stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and in the Leicester music scene, is there anybody that you're particularly sort of watching at the moment or following or keen on? Um, I love Siobhan. Yeah. She's amazing. Her voice, when she boots that out, she's summer tells. Um, I'm a bit old school with the Leicester music scene. I've not really been in too much the last three or four years because I've been so hooked up in everything else yeah uh, I love By The Rivers obviously everyone does um, there's loads of there's loads of people I've seen hundreds of people I've seen but I can't remember the names yeah because I've just been so tied up in everything I've done that I don't recognise anyone I can just name the people from three years ago yeah and just go yeah they were they were fucking brilliant they were and then you go yeah well they're now and I don't know yeah I just don't know disconnected but, from the scene kind of thing but I still play in the scene yeah if you know and um, Rhett Barrow's wicked Rhett Barrow's wicked yeah, yeah he's well brilliant. Rhett's on next week with us is it? and at this weekend he's doing his video shoot here at the Soundhouse is he? yeah oh wicked uh, don't are you doing come... that for him 
No, uh, Rob Gurney's doing it. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, Rob Gurney's got a boy. Shout out to Rob Gurney. <laughs> Happy birthday for last week. Sorry I went there, but I had a gig at the donkey. <laughs> he did. I can witness that because yeah. I was there. Oh, were you? <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, good old boy. Um, we're coming up sort of to the close, which is a shame because yeah. it'd be nice to talk a bit longer. Um, it was mentioned on Facebook that you might be replacing Zane in One Direction. We'd better let people know one way or the other how your negotiations with Simon Cowell went. I think if you don't want to moan on your live stream, <laughs> then you, you better wipe that question off the button. Because <laughs> my hairy ass will be coming out if you carry that across. <laughs> you mentioned hair. I was going to mention that as well, yeah. but we'll, we'll not go there. Well, thank you very, very much for coming along, no, Mike. As I say, it was great of you to come at short awesome. notice as well. We wanted to have you sometime anyway, but it's nice to have been able to get it in sooner rather nice. than later. Yeah, lovely. Um, a big thank you again to the Sound House, to Greg, um, and also to our two audio people, Bav, and thank Joe. you, Bav. Bav and Joe. Bav and Joe. Jobs are good. Are the boys. So thanks, Mike. If you could play us thanks out with the song, it. that'd be brilliant. Yeah. Which one am I going to play? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> just get, I'll just crack another beer before I start. <laughs> I think I'll do the same. Yeah. Well, shall I give you that one that's on the table? Cheers, Trevor. No problem. Can you shop in that pack? Oh, my. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go thirsty. Oh, do I have to turn that back towards me now? No, you can leave it where it was. Otherwise, it looks really good looks on the camera. I've just got a text through my phone. <laughs> Lol, you replacing Zane. <laughs> <laughs> At least somebody's looking. Fuck you, hell. <laughs> I'm not replacing Zane. <laughs> this is called uh, Things Can't See. This is one of the very first songs I ever wrote, actually. Seen this at, um, I've played it so many times, but it's still prominent. When did things become this good? I really think I should. I could get blood of what I love. I love things that I can't see. They should have fit my face while I could taste the grace in which it made the button to the good and save the escapade from things that I can't see. Why do I want to ignore the right and cherish every night? That no life I've seen them before. I can feel the score. Oh yeah, I'm wrong. You're right. Yeah. I start to turn to learn and learn and see it simply confused with time and money It's all the same to me Things that I can't see They hit me quickly, I feel shitty There's no pity, find the racky chunk of slightly lash on so brightly There's nothing left I can't say I can't say why do I want to ignore the right and cherish every night? I know life, I've seen them before. I can feel the skull. I'm wrong, you're right. You're right.
I didn't realize till now My head was up in the clouds I looked and I found In giant These things ain't gonna find you The words aren't always the truth You gotta find them It's a mission In giant In giant Thank you. Oi! Oi, oi. Mikey Kerr's like, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for having me. Good awesome. night, everybody. Delay, hey, I've just, I've, I've just done a fucking cracking message, Joe. <laughs> yeah, listen. Right, one from me dad. Yeah. You're drinking too much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wicked gig. Second one. You came across really well. Me and Carly really enjoyed it. You're still a c- No. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't say that one. I know. Sure I'm fucking well behaved. We should have kept streaming for you to say that yeah. one.